part 1. Algebraic expressions terms. You will find this on page 70 in the Namibia Mathematics Grade 9 textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Algebra. A section of mathematics which uses letters to represent numbers. These letters and numbers are connected by addition, subtraction and or division. Expressions. 2x plus 3. There's not an equal sign. Okay, we are going to do this in this chapter. Equations. If you look at this, you will see there's an equal sign. So it's two expressions. There is an expression. There is an expression. So two expressions equal to each other. We are going to look at this in the next chapter. Okay, now algebraic expressions terms. Terms are used in a maths expression like words are used in a sentence. So, we all love maths. How many words are there? One, two, three, four. But these words are made up of letters. Okay, so if we look at this expression, how many terms are there? One, two, three, four. Why? Because terms are separated by plus and minus. Terms are made up of factors. So 2 times x, that is factors. Okay. And terms are joined by multiply, divide, brackets, fractions, or a root. We will look at it in the following example. Okay. Example 1. Write down the number of terms in the following algebraic expression. So how many terms? 1, 2, 3. Because there is a minus and a plus and that separate the terms. Okay, so let's look at number B. Remember that the root combine that part. So there is only one, two terms. If I look at this, this long division stripe that combines that whole thing. So there will only be one term. Okay, and this one, brackets. What does bracket do? Bracket combined. There was one, two, three terms, but due to the brackets, there's only one term. Okay, so there is a multiply that combines. There's a bracket it combines, and there's another multiply. So that will only be one term. And then the last one, this will be one, and that combines, so that's two. So there's two terms. Okay, a one term we call a monomial. A two terms, a binomial, three terms, a trinomial, and more than three terms, a polynomial. Okay. I want you to stop and I want you to do trinomial one, all the numbers. Okay. You can continue with the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, write down the number of terms in the following algebraic expressions. Okay, now if you look at this, this is separation, so there's one, two. So number A will just have two terms. Number B, <coughs> that bracket combines, so there is only one term. Number C, that division, it combines, the bracket combines, so that will only be one term. <coughs> Number D, that's a separation, so there's one. That multiply combines, that's a separation, so there will be three terms. Number E, that long division makes it only one term. Number F, that will be one, two, so that will be two terms. Number G, Remember, that makes it one and this, so there's only one, two terms. And number H, remember that long division, it makes it only one term. Okay, now let's just look at this. This number in front of the alphabet letter is called the numerical coefficient, the number in front of the letter. What is this alphabet letter called? It's the variable or the unknown. Okay. 
And what is this term called without an alphabet letter? It's only a number. It's called the constant. Okay. So example two. Determine the coefficient of x. So it's like you remove x and what is left in the term. So if you remove x, what is left, it will be 4yz. Okay. In the next one, number b, if you remove x, what is left? Negative 2. So that's the coefficient. It's also called the numerical coefficient because it's the number. Look at number c. Now number C, remember, if there's nothing in front, there's a 1. So if you remove x, what will be left? A third. Because it's a third times x. So if I remove x, then a third will be left. Let's just clean this. Okay, the next one. Number D, remember, if there stands nothing in front, it's a 1. So if you remove x, what will it be? Negative 1. If there's no number, the number is 1. Okay, the next one. L only look at the term with an x. Ignore the rest. So if you remove x, what will be left? 5. Okay. The next one, that's only one term. So if you remove x, what will be left? 3y minus 2z. And that's the coefficient. And the next one, oh, what's the problem? There's an x and there's an x. So if you remove x, there's a 3 left. And if you remove x, what is left? A 4y. So if x is removed from the terms, the remaining part is 3 plus 4y, which is the coefficient of x. Okay. I want you to only do for me, try now to, only number 2, but A, B, C, D, E, F, as well as number D. And also number 3, just to see if you can know that constants. You can stop the video, and as soon as you are finished, then you can continue with the video. I'm just going to make space. Okay, so we are at try now, 2, and we are going to start with number 2a. So determine the coefficient of a. Okay, I'm just going to use a color that I can write here also. Okay. So if I remove A, what will be left? 5BC. Okay. So the next one, number B. If I remove A, what will be left? Negative 8. Okay, number C, remember there's a 1 again. So if I remove, it's actually negative a quarter times A. That's what's standing there. So if I remove A, what is left? That will be negative a quarter. Remember... The term, grab the sign in front of it. Okay, number D. Remember, if there's nothing, there's a 1. So if I remove A, what will be left? Negative 1. Number E. Okay, if I remove A, only look at the term with an A. There's not an A. So what will be left? A 3. Number F. Remember, this is one term. So if I remove A, what will be left? 7B minus C. Okay. And then the next one, number G, um, it, remember there's an A and there's an A. So if I remove A, what will be left? 12 minus 10B. And that will be the coefficient. Okay. Uh, let's just make again space and then we do number 3. Okay, number 3. And we start with number A. In each of the following examples, write down the constant term. Now, remember, the t it's the term without alphabet letters. And what will that be? Positive 3. Okay, number B, the constant term. What will that? It will be that one. So what will it be? Positive 5. And then the last one, and remember, there's the term, but grab the sign in front of it. So it's not 7, but it's negative 7. That will be the constant term. Okay, and let's just look at this final part. What is the difference? It's a revision of grade 8. What is the difference between like terms and unlike terms? Now, the variables and the powers are the same if it's like terms. The coefficients can be different. Now, look, there's a y, there's a y, there's a y, there's a y. So they are like, also like sheep. They are all like. Okay, the variables are the same. They are like terms. If I look at this one, there's an x, y, 
there's a Y, X, but the order does not matter. I'm just going to rewrite it in alphabetic order, X, Y. There's an X, Y, there's an X, Y. So this will all be like terms. The variables are the same. The coefficients can be different. And we usually rewrite the variables in alphabetic order. But if you look at this, the variables are different. There's a Y and there's an X. So it's like two different animals. This is a sheep and this is a goat. Okay. So they are not like, th th even if the coefficients are the same, the numerical coefficients, the numbers, it's still not like terms because the variables must be the same. And in this one, this is y to the power 2, and this is just y. So again, you can see that the variables are not exactly the same, and still it's going to be unlike terms. Okay, let's look at example 3. Underline all the like terms in the following expression using the same type of line or color. I'm going to use color, maybe later on line. So if you see, this is 2a. Is there another a? Yes, positive 5a. This is 3b. Is there another b? Yes, negative 6b. So this is like and this is like. If I look at this one, there's a 3x squared. Is there another 3x squared? Yes, positive 5x squared. Okay, is there negative 4 x, remember, grab the sign. Uh, is there another x? Yes, positive 8x. And uh, which one is left? This one is on its own. It's 5xy. There's not another xy. Okay. So underline all the like terms in the following expression with the same type. I'm going to use color to make it more, more clear for you. So if I look at this one, there's a 2x. Is there another 2x? Yes, positive 12. And Look what I'm doing. I'm underlining it from the sign because the number grabbed the sign in front of it. And then the next one, I'm going to use even a, there's a negative 3y. Is there another y? No. And then the next one, there's a constant. And what is the constant? Negative 5. So there's three different type of terms. Okay, if I look at number B, there's a 2xy. Is there another xy? Yes, the order is just different, but it does not matter. They are still like terms. And then look, there's a free y. That's all right. Oh, but this one is y squared. So this one is not like to this one. It's, it's unlike to the rest. Okay, then number C, there's a free a. Is there another a? Yes, negative 2a. Underline it from the sign. And then there is a free b, and there's a negative 5b. And then the last one, that will be a negative 6. Okay. And then the next one, there's a 3ab squared. Let's look if there's another. Oh, it's a negative 2ab squared. And then the next one, it's negative 6a squared b and negative 12a squared b. And then this one, it's a 4ab. It's not like to the rest. And that's what you always do before you start simplifying the terms.